TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, if we do go live and you happen to miss it, this is the channel where it will be. So you can go like that. Don't forget, we also got the Patreon. We just started Fresh Meat. And three shows are about to end. Three more shows are about to end. So three new shows are getting voted on. Uh, that, that's, that's a plus. <laughs> Don't forget, we also got the Discord as well, man. You can be a part of that, man. Just, you know, let me know. Um, all the links to this stuff is down below in the link tree. And, it, and also in there is anything else you need to find me, man. This is Police Interceptor, Season 21, Episode 18. You know we don't do this in order. Whenever it come out and we can find them, that's when we do them. Let's get into it. Mother of Chase, I'm out! Seven years Damn, ago, right into a commercial story Crazy. blew up the Never seen. Nottinghamshire is surrounded by four counties Lincolnshire, Leicestershire, South Yorkshire, and Derbyshire. And when crims cross borders, county coppers team up to take them down. After all, everyone needs good neighbours. It's all about interoperability, they call it. So we have the same tactics, similar vehicles. Obviously, criminals don't live by borders, so therefore, nor should we. There's obviously going to be a little bit of friendly rivalry, I'm sure, yeah, between us. Friendly and, banter. Yeah, other neighbouring forces. But ultimately, if there's someone knocking around that needs locking up for something nasty and we can come together as a team to sort it, then that's the result you want, ultimately. On the border, a Derbyshire unit is after a Seat Leon that's failed to stop. Some red traffic lights ahead. Straight through the traffic lights without lifting. Remaining medium now, speed is 6 zero. Road conditions are still wet. The weather's getting worse and so is the suspect's driving. Speed is 7-0 in a 30. The Seat's making for the border, where an interceptor welcoming party awaits. Multiple units, including Jim Carrington and Chalky, are racing to intercept. Derbyshire pursuing the car in the 608 towards us. Don't know why it's about to stop what it's doing, but it's, if it keeps coming, it'll appear ahead of us. I feel like at this time of day, this time of night, it's really when the cops really don't got nothing, nothing, nothing to do. So this is the worst possible time where you could initiate a police chase. Like, what are you even thinking? I don't condone that anyway, but like, you're not getting away. <laughs> Ever. Not at this time. The Knotts team is around eight miles from the pursuit. Increasing the speed to eight zero through the, through the town center, some approach hill, down the hill. And the suspect is absolutely flooring it. Speed is 9-0, They've no idea why he's failed to stop, but he's hell-bent on escape. Speed is 9-0, down the hill, he's centering the road at the moment, now to the offside of the road. The runaway Seat's doing three times the speed limit on the wrong side of the road, in the rain. And he's pulled a kamikaze disappearing act. He's turned his headlights off, DRA is... Hi, this is not Did I speak too soon? You better get away. I can't. Does he move it because he can't see either? Derbyshire cops need to stop this car before someone's killed. Notch units are still miles away. As the suspect raises the stakes. By heading onto the M1. Backup arrives from a Derbyshire undercover Beamer and a dog unit. James, I need you to do a get by. I need two units ahead of me. Get by, get by. I'll stretch into the lane one. The Beamer races past the Seat in the outside lane. Reducing the speed. The runaway is slowing down. He may have seen sense. 
Or maybe not. James, keep the head. Keep the head, James, if you can. Dog, you need to not get involved. Speed is one, two, zero. One wrong move at over a ton and it's curtains. But the suspect doesn't seem one, to care. Two, zero. So he tries to muscle past the unmarked. James, we're not in a position to put a block on yet, mate. We're not in a position to put a block on. Keep the head. They're going to need greater numbers to put a box on. And the Knox Cavalry are racing up the M1 and closing in. 120 mile an hour, mate. Chalky might have hated maths at school, but if the pursuit's a mile away, he knows how fast they need to go to catch up. The answer? Very fast. It was a random sword in this picture. Can't cause it for a 140. With the X5 at its limits, at last they're in the chase. Valet they are. The Seat Speed Demon now has two forces to contend with. Knox Foxtrot Zulu 2 behind you. It's lead 290. And he's making a break for it. Heavy break in lane 2, he's trying to get off. Standby. He makes to come off, and the front Derbyshire unit takes the slip road. But the Seat sold him a dummy. Ah! It's an incredibly dangerous manoeuvre, with the Seat narrowly avoiding the slip road traffic island and a 40-ton lorry. Having given one car the slip on the slip road, he buries the throttle. Too quick for tactics here. Pursuit's 15 minutes in and they desperately need to slow him down. Oh, yeah, there's going to need a couple of units to do some get bys. And we'll put a team pack on him once we've got safety in place. Speed is 1, 2, 0 at the moment. The plan is to get units... What do you think the numbers are? Like, how often do you think people get away? Ahead. Like, I, I like... Mm -hmm. Slow the Seat, then safely perform a team pack. Cars getting to lane four that can try and attempt to get by, please. And another car up front with him, please. Another car up front with him. He can't do this on his own. One unit gets in front. Safety on, please. Safety on. With a second car closing in, they've no choice but to try a T-Pack at over 100 miles an hour in the pouring rain. This could get naughty in a minute. Yep. This is as risky as it gets. Yeah, they on one today, my boy. I ain't never seen this commercial. As I shouldn't. Because I be out of my blockers on. Speed is one and two zero. Knott's interceptors have joined their Derbyshire neighbours in the pursuit of a 120 mile an hour runaway. Heavy break in lane two, is it trying to get off? Stand by. Oh yeah, it's going to need a couple of units to do some get bys. And we'll put a team pack on him once we've got safety in place. Despite extreme speeds, they've got two units ahead of the dangerous driver and are gearing up to try a team pack. This could get naughty in a minute. Yep. Okay. The driver's already lost one car with a crazy slip lane shuffle. And successfully shaken off numerous cops. But one Derby car is clinging on, along with Knott's finest, Jim and Chucky. It's one, seven, five, towards east. The runaways ditched the M1, but he's still doing motorway speeds. I don't know why, why the narrator is so surprised that this is happening. He speeds. He's on the wrong side of an A road at over 80. While they wait for backup to get in place, the driver's up to his old tricks. Temporarily turned his lights off, uh, back on again. The RA is still medium. But the deck is beginning to favour the cops. Got another 
two cars behind us now. Yes, yes. Who have a pair of fearsome aces up their sleeve. This my friend. If, if he runs, be, be mindful, there's two dogs. You know. Let the dogs have it. Yeah. The pursuit's now 20 minutes old, but the driver isn't letting up as he treats the road as his own racetrack. Unit, you confirm your authority, please. Suitably trained T-Pack motor. There's a real risk they'll have to abort the pursuit. Oh. It's gonna go wrong side of the line. I doubt it. It's the A38, Kings Mill. Is an accident waiting to happen? The roads may be quiet, but they're approaching more built-up areas and the five units on the Seat's tail may be forced to throw in the towel. We shot the road, guys, so John Cockle Junction, no deviation, straight on towards Mansfield Town Centre. As they enter the town of Mansfield, the driver's luck finally runs out. Crash! Stand by, stand by. Driver lost control. Stand by, stand by, stand by. The suspect tries a reverse ram, hitting the X5. But Chalky and the team are onto it. Open the door! Out of vehicle now! Now! Is he trying to punch the window? I thought he had like a like a little thing in his hand. He's trying to punch the window. Get out! Out of the vehicle now! On the ground! That's adrenaline. Out! On the ground! Stop struggling! Stop resisting! Stop resisting her! Stop! He almost pulled his drawers off, they saw. Come on then! You got some question? Yeah. Stop struggling! Wait a minute. There you go. Come on, just get him. We've got him. Contact, contact. After a 20 mile cross county pursuit, he's earned a pair of bracelets and some sweet nothings. Top sweet up. Come on, darling. And he was getting felt up too, apparently, is what I seen. From a very angry gym. What's that all about then? Do you like Night Trinity trying to kill people and killing police officers? Totally. Not overly impressed, mate. Totally. Not overly impressed. What was all that about? Speed Demon stinks of booze. Yeah, he's clearly turnt. You can see it. So Duffy leads him to a cop car for a breath test. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You do as we say. Just give him a sec. You got anything on you? No. Although he's not so keen to get in. Tell the five you live in. Ah. Tell the five, yeah. Get in the car. Sit him in the car. Get in the car. Why the car? Finally, he's persuaded inside. And it's the ideal end to an epic pursuit. He's just lost control going straight on at Tesco's onto Chesterfield Road and then tried to reverse back into police vehicles and police officers. There's been some tactical contact. No police officers injured, 135. Despite the suspect reversing into the cops, the Derbyshire unit has managed to wrap round with Jim's X5 and Duffy in an unmarked completing the box. Chalky's bravely led the charge. I mean, I was really trying to break the window. Initially, when I got to the door, the door was locked. Out of the vehicle now! Now! I'm fully aware, obviously, glass and hands, so I wasn't hitting it that hard. Enough to make him then actually uh, unlock the door and open, then we could open the door. Once we had the door open, then that was the end of it. We had him out of the car, on the ground. On the ground! On the ground! Uh, and handcuffed pretty quickly. It's been a top team effort from Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire, with one locked up and no one injured. So what police area station he go to? When it comes to pursuits, I can happily t tell you that's probably one of the worst ones. Uh, the speeds, the risks, about 120, 130 mile an hour up the motorway, coming off through country lanes they don't know, and ultimately ends up with him going head on into a wall, and he's got away with it, ultimately. Um, nobody's got hurt, he hasn't got hurt. It's a bit of damage on his car, but yeah, astounding, really. Though there is one casualty. I don't know what that means, but it's not healthy, and no. the steering means particu it's particularly heavy. Bearing in mind. Look at that steering wheel. I'm literally having to... Yeah, yeah, well, there's the, that's the end of your power steering situation. Use all my might to steer the car. But a bit of damage to the X5 is a minor price to pay. And news comes in that the bloke's blown 85 at the roadside. 
Damn. That's over twice the legal limit. You'd expect a car to drive like that if it'd been stolen in a burglary, if he was wanted for some kind of serious yeah. offense. He ran because he drunk. That's why he ran, period. We know why, huh? It is. Um, so I'm genuinely shocked that he's driven like that simply because he's had something to drink. Unbelievable. Speed Demon turned out to be disqualified as well as drunk. He pleaded guilty to dangerous driving, driving whilst disqualified, driving without insurance, failing to stop for police and drink driving. He was sent down for 10 months and disqualified from driving for five years and five months. Don't even know what that is. What's that, a new drink? It's a new drink coming out every other week. Cannabis continues to be the UK's most commonly used illegal drug. The late hey, don't forget, man. Shout out to the first responders, man. Check out my dis in the description. Check out the link tree. It's a link down there called Link Tree. That's where everything, all my socials, all the GoFundMe to get me to the UK, man. I'm trying to get there in September. This uh, man, September is the day. This month is my birthday, May 26. Salute, man. So drop what you can, man. If anybody, everybody can drop one pound, we lit. If everybody that drops, that watches this video, drops one pound, we in the game. Donates one pound, we in the game. We there. It is figures estimating around 2.6 million users in the UK. And when green fingered weed farmers grow their own, it's the interceptors who cut them down to size. Bingo. Just think about it though, UK. Like, I know, like, y'all say it'll never be legal in the UK, but like, think about how many grow houses y'all find. Think about how many people would actually go out and get a license to actually be able to grow. And think about how many jobs y'all would put in the atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? Think about how much money that y'all would be able to get. Think about how much new buildings would go up, how much stuff would be paid off, how much the government, you know what I'm saying? Over in Northwest Nottingham, the knife crime team Sergeant Johnny Groves and Joe Riley are on patrol when a blue vector catches their attention. By the time they spin on it, the vector has booted it. And it's off skis. But they spot it hanging right at the distance. So tough on it. And they're soon on its tail. I'm trying to vector do one, it's gonna be back towards uh old farm. Dead end fella. Give it up. Just stop. Back towards old farm mode. There's no escape. Yeah, it's pulling over now. There are two Ow. occupants in the car. Good choice. Out. A bloke. Hey, and his young daughter, who were taken to the police car. Meanwhile, backup arrives in the form of knife crime team sergeant Matt Daly. That's a good choice, my brother. You ain't know where you was going. Cops was on you. You got a kid in the car. Then like, Ken Tinley. Stop. Let me know if I need to get out. Yeah, I'll let you know, mate. They need to establish why the driver was so keen to avoid the cops. Yeah, it's got a lot in it. There's a bag in the back seat with some in some foil and some. And this could be a clue. Right, that's going to mask a crop full of cannabis in the boot of your car. Normally, it's not just like loose in a cardboard box. Regardless of what people's personal views are on cannabis, you know, it, it's 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 a controlled drug. It's illegal. Until that changes, it needs to be treated as such. So exposing young children to it casually while you're driving around is not really acceptable. The kids dropped off with mum, yeah, while dads offer a chat with another unit. Are we happy? 
Yeah, done. In total, they found four to five ounces of cannabis, a set of digital scales, and a couple of deal bags. Oh yeah, that's you intent to sell and that. Matt's got a hunch where the weeds come from. He's had a little grow, isn't he? Yeah. Probably at his home address. I bet that's come from three or four plants. Is he happy to come back, do a consensual search of his flat and VA him? Interceptors can request to conduct an official search, but there's no need if a suspect simply grasses himself up. He's actually been quite forthcoming with information. Um, he has openly disclosed to officers that um, if they're accompanying back to his home address, he will happily point out a small grow to them. So. Very Sometimes honest. it's better to just they do that. They arrive at Honest John's flat. Is he staying in the car? Yeah. I don't think it's going to be a small grow. I think he's trying to minimize damage. He's like, yeah, no, no, no. Let me just come. Let me point what I want y'all to see out. I think there's probably going to be more than what he's saying. Yeah. Just him that lives here. Yeah. Might as well start with a loft if that's where he's saying it is. Matt takes the high ground. You got the torch, can you, Ken? Ken? It says it's all, they're only quads. Ken has a route around downstairs. And he's already found something of interest. Some money here. Just hidden me on the uh, picture frame. A few hundred quid there. We'll get in contact with a financial investigation unit and just um, have a proper look at this guy's finances and see if he's living beyond his means. As Ken continues the search, Matt's found the source of the weed. They be doing the most. Damn. They check out. I can't. I still can't believe they be doing all of this in a stop. Um, so he was pretty honest, true to his word in the end. Um, he said that he had a few more plants hung up, drying, ready to take the female flowering head, the, um, the cannabis off. Um, and that's exactly what we found. <coughs> the Sarge has been on the force nearly 17 years and seen enough cannabis grows to know his bush from his bud. And that's that's what he's after. It's just this female flowering head, these buds. You see all the crystals on it. That's the bit that gives it its potency. Boy, you smoke. <laughs> Cut it out, officer. We know you get high. Cut it out. Three. And Ken's found more of the harvest in the bedroom. In the uh, inbuilt wardrobe in the master bedroom is three, three jars of you know, cropped and dried out cannabis. Just over a grand's worth, maybe. But no one's getting wacky from this backy as all the weeds heading straight for the incinerator. Early stages of the investigation. The incinerator is going to get high. The person that's operating. Investigation in terms of <clears throat> what offence we go down, whether we're looking at production or possession with intent to supply. So, yeah, it's been a bad day for him, but a good day for us. After an investigation, the suspect was cautioned for the production of cannabis. Still to come. Put your right hand in the middle of your back. Put your right hand in the middle of your back. The hokey cokey for a screen addict. Put it in the middle of your back now. There's a very distinct smell of cannabis coming from your car as I've been blowing you. Phil sniffs out a driver. And lean forward and just stick your tongue out. And the great escape. Science proves your best sleep is vital to your mental, emotional. That's true. There's nothing quite like working with one of your best buddies on a shift. Can you suck fruit pastels? Just suck it, don't chew them. It's too late. <laughs> and it might be a sweet start for good mates Rob Ely and Jim Campin, but they know things can quickly turn sour. Iffy Audi, two o'clock. Black S3 with silver mirrors. Stand by your beds. Stand by your beds. 
but Audi man has no plans to stand by anything. He's heading for the hills. Mate, is he off? He's off, mate. Yeah, he's off. Game on. Team, we've got a failed stop in uh, Brockstow Colby Road. And it's a left, 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 left onto uh, Withan Road. Uh, not got a full VRM yet, stand by. So, but it's an Audi A3 in black, silver wing mirrors. Speed is uh, six zero, medium risk. Marked car, T-Pack and Stinger train. T-Pack and Stinger won't be necessary because the Audi's pulled up. Hey. There's a crowd inside, so Rob draws his taser. Stay where you are, all of you stay where you are. Keep your hands where I can see him. Stay where you are, keep your hands where I can see him. Don't move, stay there, stay there. There's no one. That man is not listening. What, he just continues to walk forward. Stay there, stop, sir. One in the driver's seat, but a sizable trio has emerged from the back. Use the front of the car, hands behind your back. Do as you're told. Turn around, look at that car, and put your hands behind your back. You do the same. Jim deals with a fourth man sitting in the front passenger seat. Get out of the car. Get out of the car now. Get out of the car. I'll smash the window. Get out of the car. The boys are outnumbered and need to control the situation fast. Dude, yeah, come over here. Come over here. Turn around. While Jim tries to get his guy in cuffs, Rob shows another into the X5. Jump in the back of there. The man who's in the front passenger seat denies being the driver, vehemently. I wasn't even driving the way, dog. Turn around. What are you doing? Listen. Turn around. Listen to me. Don't Listen. start acting. Put your hands behind your back. Turn around. Turn around. Oh, my God. Put your right hand in the middle of your back now. And I'm going to put you on So who was driving? Casper, the friendly ghost? Jasper, the British ghost, you feel me? Who? You making yourself look guilty talking about, I wasn't even driving back. Yes, he was. Rob's bloke is in cuffs, but the other man is resisting. Put your right hand in the middle of your back now. It's an odd time to take... I'm trying to get that text off, that last little IG post off. <laughs> I bet you that's uh, getting locked up. Mm -mm. Mr. Friend and this pair are proving a real handful. For what? The more you keep twisting. Nobody's twisting. You're Put twisting. Your Shut up. I don't stand here. You Shut you up. I was in the middle of your mouth. Go. What you stop twisting. The big man tries to trip Rob up. Big mistake. No. Get over here. What stop trying to put him on the floor. Stop what trying are you to... doing? Stop trying to trip me up. Things have gone south in a hurry and they're threatening to escalate. What are you doing? Mate, look at this. I'll tease you. Get, Get on the floor. Tease me. Get on the floor. What are you doing? You stay where you are. I have a dog of you. They need backup fast. Four of them. Get around the back. What are you doing? Just off Colby Road. In the chaos, one passenger's done a runner. The bloke in the X5 is also on the move, and he's not after Rob's fruit pastels. Like, like, no funny, sh like the one that was on the other side of the road, I was waiting, like, when are you gonna run? At this point, your boys is tweaking. This dude then climbed from the front to the back, like, what? Back booty crack out like. Houdini's out of the X5 and with their hands tied, the boys can't do much about it. We've got one running back towards Colby. Get low officers down there. Nobody's been stopped doing what? Rob describes the best part of the job as working with his mates to lock up the bad guys. And it's going to take teamwork to restrain this charm. Stop doing what are you doing to Get your hand behind your back. Anything. You're going to lose, mate. Get your hand behind your back. Nobody's done anything. Your hand behind your the back. remaining men protest their innocence. So Rob points out the obvious. The car's just failed to stop. Finally, they get the man in cuffs. You heard this. What are you doing? They're kicking me in the face, man. But he's not very happy about it. Ah! Stop struggling. Stop struggling. What's wrong with you? Ah! Ah, you've done nothing wrong. Yeah, I, I didn't know. 
trust you. Stop, Stop right. twisting my arm! If you've had your if you had, had your way, you'd have had a pop at knocking me out. No, I wouldn't. Yes, you would, mate. You no, know you would. Mate, Stop resisting. Okay. Back up arrives. Tough. Oh, I've done Come on. Goes all right, mate. Come on, start walking. What is wrong with you? Look at the size of you, mate. Meaning Rob and Jim can concentrate on the matter at hand. Oh, They've run a check and the car is registered to the bloke who was in the front seat. Oh, right. driving. Uh, it's your car, mate. Yeah, it's my car. Tell you what I'm going to do, because I believe you've been a drunk. He's clearly drunk, too. Out of this car, I'm going to breathalyse you. Yeah. I'm over the limit, so that's why I want to drive Obviously. Bloke, keep going. Blow properly. Seal your lips around it, mate. Round two. OK, so you need to make a seal around that and blow into it. You ready? Look, right. It's your last chance to do it because you're not like, making a seal around it. I want driving, it? No, listen. I suspect you to have been driving. Respect, that is sufficient. OK, mate. Yeah, so, are you going to provide a sample of breath? This is your last right, opportunity to do it. These They're not being released, oh, okay, mate. Please, are you going to provide me with a sample of breath? Last chance. OK, thank you, mate. So, at 20 yeah, to midnight, please, I'm arresting you for failing to provide a roadside breath sample. I'm all he tried. All you can do is give him an A for effort. Also, E for effort. Arresting you for failing to stop and also for dangerous driving. It's not been the easiest stop. So, yeah, when we've got there, I mean, there's four lads suddenly get out and there's only two of us. It's not taking... So, what, the other two escape? ...them long to kind of figure that out. Um, and with the best will in the world, we, you know, we, one, one cop's sometimes struggles to detain one person, let alone four. I don't think this was an ideal moment. Men are bound for the nick. Struggles to detain one person, let alone four. Both men are bound for the nick, much to Jim and Rob's obvious relief. Y'all finna go look for the other two? That could have got really out of hand. Really quick. They were up for a tussle. Certainly, I can't account for the chap that Rob's locked up, but the boy that I've locked up out the passenger seat, who's the owner of the car, was as strong as an ox, and I couldn't get his right hand behind his back to get his handcuff on it. And at uh, one point, he's dropped his phone and been sat with a clenched fist like that, so I was expecting one to come round to get hold of me. And back... Yeah, I've never seen one of y'all get really, like, punched. Like, really, like, assaulted. Like, cause for somebody to assault you, they got to really not care about what's coming after that because they're going to jail for sure for Custody, a minute. It's fair to say it's not friends reunited. Uh, I've been right with you from the start. You have not, mate. Don't even try that. Don't try even try it, it mate, because it will all be on camera. Exactly. How can you claim you've been right? Take well, a look. Take a look at yourself. Walk this way, mate. Come on, mate. The breath test machine wants a word. So why you making okay. me do this? Because I suspect you to have been driving. Right? Yeah. Keep blowing. Perfect, mate. Keep blowing. Keep blowing. Steady it down a bit. Thank you. I don't got that much breath to be blowing like that. You know what I'm saying? All that breath leaving my body. What about my lungs? What about my blood need to be oxygenated? Like, come on now. That's a safety hazard for me to blow that hard into that thing like that. He's blown it. 60, it almost again. twice the limit. Pause. They need one more sample. Not too hard, please. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Steady it down a little bit. Keep... Right, okay, look. So, it says it there, look, insufficient. That's what I'm talking about. Like, it's hard to do and that. Don't hold your breath. You've got no medical reason not to provide a sample of breath. You've done one. <laughs> The bloke's clearly not a fan of Jim. I mean, do you like it? Yeah, it's one of the best mates. Yeah. Yeah. One of the best guys I know him. But at least Jim's still got a fan in Rob. The boys have stuck together to come out of a tricky situation unscathed. You saw what I said, best friends, mate. The We're the two best friends that anyone could have. Looking at, like, come on now. Let's, this is not a love story. Like, come on. The suspect was also uncooperative and pleaded guilty to failure to provide, resisting arrest and a public order offence. He awaits his sentence. The owner of the car is due in court for failing to provide, resisting arrest, assaulting a police officer and driving without due care and attention. 
honestly about this weather though, it's good for sniffing out your drunk drivers. When it comes to drivers who'd like a toke, why am I getting a whiff of weed? There's one interceptor. We're driving really erratically. So why was that? Who's a particular expert? Are you, are you normally this lethargic? You seem very chilled. At weeding them out. Lean forward, just eat your tongue out. And what I'm going to do is swap both. Bill, the nose brought it. Well, the thing I want to make sure is, is whether or not your driving's down to the fact that you're taking cannabis or it's down to the fact that you're just a drip. Tonight, Phil's out-nosing for dodgy motors. <laughs> Feel the nostril. It's dank, it's horrible, but uh, we'll see what comes along. <laughs> and it's not long before a suitable shed presents itself. Now it's got this vehicle in front, it's got a bit of uh, duct tape holding the bumper on, there's wood screws, it screwed into the bumper holding it on. Uh, got a tail light out, or a, a brake light out. I turned into an American cop then, I said tail light. <laughs> What's it called? Phil's actually a born and bred Nottinghamshire copper, following in his granddad's footsteps, and he loves nothing more than busting perps like the NYPD. There is a smell, a bit of cannabis, and I don't know if it's coming from this vehicle, so we're just following it a little bit, and then we'll, we'll stop him and have a chat. The nose knows his if he whiffs, and an ill wind blows for the shed driver. No, it's definitely filling the air, so I would have thought if he was going in a, from a vehicle in the opposite direction, we would have lost it by now, but I can still smell it. There's also the potential smell of trouble in the air as an update comes in from control. Good. Your man's recorded on the name database. Right. We've got a duplicate record. On one record, he's got a warning mark of violence. Violence the mail is known to us on PNC, there's some markers that it may be violent, so we just obviously keep an eye on him. Time for a word. There should be a place to pull up here, just on the left. Usually now, because he's taking his time, he's trying to hide something. He's now moved into the centre of the car, see him leaning over. Phil doesn't miss a trick and has spotted the guy trying to conceal something. You gotta stay vertical. Yeah. Hello, sir, how are you? All right, mate. All right? You all right? Yes, anything in the vehicle that shouldn't be? No. Oh, that's right, because you were leaning across there. What were, you, what were we trying to hide? Nothing, mate. Just Nothing. Phone. No worries. OK, just come and take a seat in the back of my car. The reason why I stopped you, one, is you've got a light out. Yeah. And two, there's a very distinct smell of cannabis coming from your car as I've been following you. Right. Is there any cannabis on you? On me now. In the vehicle? In yeah, there's a little bit in there. Whereabouts? Uh, probably just under the passenger seat. Under the passenger seat. Is that what you just discarded as I pulled you over? Yeah. All right. The bloke's fessed up to carrying cannabis in his car, but Phil wants to know if there's any in his bloodstream. When was the last time you smoked cannabis? A tongue scraper. What if your tongue white? <laughs> you know, you know, people be having a white tongues. What if your tongue white and they scrape a sample? They trying to scrape a sample of THC off of it, and all that gunk come off of it. That's nasty. You know? Half an hour ago. Half an hour ago. Huh? And was that in the vehicle? No. All right. Okay. Just turn eight two. Might Cool. Thank you. How often would you say you use cannabis? Uh, every couple yeah, of days. Every couple of days. What do you use it for? Like to, to get high, Phil. To get high. Just enjoy it. Enjoy it. The man might enjoy a smoke, but drugs and driving don't mix. Over the last five years, there have been 110 deaths on UK roads because of drivers who were either drunk or high. Do you agree to provide a sample of saliva for a drugs test? Yes. Do. And lean forward and just stick your tongue out. So stick it out as far as you can. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swab each side of your tongue. I'm going to swab down the centre, down the tip, and then just repeat what I've just done before. Ooh. Hey, yo. What are we talking about here? Do. And lean forward and just stick your tongue out. So stick it out as far as you can. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swab each side of your tongue. I'm going to swab down the centre, down the tip, and then just repeat what I've just done before. I just need to have a look as well to make sure I've got enough. It's a bit kinky for me, yeah. Which this is. The test takes eight minutes, 
and although the bloke isn't living up to his violence markers, a colleague has arrived to assist. Can you just keep an eye on him a sec? I just need to search his vehicle for some drugs. Uh, I'm just going through a drug test procedure with it. Yeah, it's fine at the moment. Phil soon hones in on his prize. There we go. Uh, there's a big cannabis bush in there, which he's chucked under the seat. So, I mean, pretty much you can see there, he's, he's regularly got cannabis in it. There's a lot of cannabis residue, residue around the car, so he's regularly been smoked in the car and his grinder. So we'll just have a quick look, see if there's anything else. He's also discovered another issue. Oh! <laughs> it's not drugs. Jeez. See in that? No. It's a good bulge. Uh. But potentially just as dangerous. It shows that the integrity inside the tyres uh, given way. Uh, so it's allowing, obviously, the pressure to come out. So, you know, if you're thinking you're doing a motorway, doing speeds of uh, 70 mile an hour, you'll have blow. a blowout. So that definitely needs sorting out. Are you, uh, are you wearing a massive great bulge on the side of your tyre? No. Hmm. Why is the one there, yeah? Well, yeah, it says, oh, you've, cur you've, hit some you've hit something. No, I've not seen that. The driver denies all knowledge of the dodgy bulge, but there's no denying the result of the drugs wipe. Uh, right. Um, ultimately, you've provided a positive drugs test for uh, cannabis. So it's moment in time arresting on suspicion of driving this vehicle whilst over specified limit. I mean, I didn't even have to do the test. He already told you he did it 30 minutes ago. For cannabis, so you didn't have to say anything, but he may harm your defence. If you do not mention when questions, so much later relying in court, anything to do saying, maybe giving evidence. What's going to happen now, which I think my colleagues explained to you, is we're going to take you down to Mansfield Police Station, where we do a formal drug procedure with you, take a sample from you, that gets sent away to a lab, we find out exactly how much cannabis you've got in your system. After a quick pat down, it's off downtown. We put the blood sample. There is a specified limit, so if he's over that limit, he's dealt with exactly the same as uh, a drink drive. So we'll be looking at a ban at court. Um, and obviously, you've got the, the possession of cannabis as well. The suspect pleaded guilty to drug driving and possession of a Class B drug. He was banned from driving for 12 months and ordered to pay a total of £525 in fines and costs. He also had to sort the defective tyre within 14 days. 525, I feel like you paid a lot. I've been seeing other people. I haven't seen people take police officers on here for a 30, 40 minute car chase and get a $90 fine. They told him five something. Still to come. It's late evening. It's late evening and Rob's back on patrol, this time with Dan Machin. That bomb shop was telling you about. Oh, that's pretty cool. Father and son. Yeah. They're scoping out good places for a haircut. Yes. But they won't need to wait till opening time for a close shave. Whoa. Oh, mate, he's. Wait, he has, he's crashed. He crashed yeah. already? He's crashed it. Golf GTI screens past. I'm talking about the police turn the corner, y'all speed by him and crash immediately. This is not for y'all. Stacked into a park mini. Running, drivers in, drivers in. The passengers are bailed, but the driver's still inside. They're straight on him. Stay there. Stay there. <laughs> hey, bro had no vertical. Inside. They're straight on him. <laughs> stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there. Hands behind your that back. That was Taurus Patella. Hands behind your back. Where's your mate's gone? God no. Is it your car? Yes, my Clearly on class A's. My car, yeah. Mate, stop tensing up. What are you doing? Thanks. Put on a car, it's crashed. Uh, two runners got the driver detained. Rob addresses the obvious. That was bad, wasn't it? Yeah. Terrible. He's got this car fixed. You'll need to get it fixed again. Honestly, I didn't even see the turning. Didn't you? That's because you're going too fast. Oh, my God. Go on, mate. Let's go over to the car.
In you go. Uh, no. no jump in. He's not done much damage to the Mini, but the impact on the verge was enough to trigger the driver's airbag and oh. damage his GTI. Oh. There's also a sizable boot print on his bonnet. It's not exactly Starsky and Hodge. <laughs> police interceptors if they didn't point it out as well man i can't do all the work that's hilarious bro I'm trying to jump up there like it wasn't wet and raining like he like he was you know what i'm saying like he was in the nba or something top marks for staying upright and cutting him off dan yeah i'm a bit too old for diving over bonnets but um yeah, it's worth a go it's tall for nothing yeah. got him up. it's embarrassing and it's on camera okay. Dan's a fan of TV cop Luther, but the mild-mannered interceptor has his own way of doing things. I'd like to think he, uh, he saw me coming over the bonnet and gave up. Whether he did or not, he's got questions to answer. You drunk? Pardon? You drunk? No, I've had two cans of beer. Honestly, I'm like really cut with that. I've been just had the car fixed. What size cans? There's no beer in the passenger footwell, just... Yeah, Jameson. Shame the look of the Irish doesn't extend to Irish whiskey. If the driver's been at that, odds are he's over the limit. When did you last have a drink? About an hour ago. There's just one problem. Dan and Rob don't have a breathalyzer. Come on now. Y'all, come on now. What kind of unit is this? Y'all ran out of what? I don't know anything. I've not got a drink yet. Oh. I've shouted up on nine, they're sending someone. Sweet. The call's gone out for someone who does. Yeah, Meanwhile, Rob shoots the breeze with Jimmy Two Beers about the surprise junction. There's no signs or anything, though, is there? Yeah, there is. There's loads. There's not. There's what? not. Well, you shouldn't be going so quick that you can't see the junction as it comes up. There's no you're a man. There's normally signs, though. No, I don't, yeah. You know where you're going. There's no lights or anything. Lights? Is it light? Are you joking? Is it lighted up round here? Yeah, there's a massive giveaway sign there. No, there isn't. What? That one? The upside down uh, sign? Uh, 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 uh. That's a giveaway sign. That ain't a cautionary sign. Come on now. When the bunny get. You've got a defence, Dan. Go on. The giveaway sign was not was not visible enough. All right. Like that one there with the bright LED light on it, on top of it. So you won't go too quick then. Probably a bit. A bit. A bit. You've had a drink. I've had two times, yeah. Somehow, other units spot the giveaway sign and safely negotiate the treacherous junction. <laughs> Hail, mate. Arriving with a roadside breathalyzer. Cheers, mate. Dan does the honours. A deep breath and blow. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop the kill. So we'll be analysing. The legal limit is 35. Anything below you good, anything above. Not I look good. nervous. You've blown 59. Ah! The 35, you've blown 59. Right. So this is quarter past nine. And I'm asking you a suspicion of um, drink driving and uh, dangerous driving in that car. Okay? Right. You've been taken down to... Well, his friend's gone. They ain't even worried about it. They ain't brought it up or nothing. I've seen, pa seen four passengers escape today. Christy Sweet, and then you blow again on another machine, yeah. okay? Two beers, more give over than give way. The roadside breath test is just an indicator. Jump out, mate. Just gonna win this other car. If he blows more than 40 on the evidential breath machine at Mansfield Nick, then he can expect to lose his license. Back at custody. It's a deep breath. He gets a chance to blow it big time. And keep going, keep, keep going, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing a bit harder. Keep going, 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 stop. That's one. This is one more of those, yeah? The lowest of two readings will be the one that counts. 
Right, same again. Well, at least they give you the lowest. Big deep breath and blow. So, a bit harder. Keep going, 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 stop. Perfect. Have a seat and pray. If it's 14 above, you'll be charged with um, drink driving. If it's 39 or below, it gets binned off. That's the lowest one. So the two results, lowest one, needs to be 39 or lower. Like the lottery. Could be quite close. The results are in. Uh, so you're 56 Damn. and 53. Woo! Those numbers up. So they're over, over, over 40. That's the bad news. The good news, he wins a nice warm blanket and overnight accommodation. Probably get a ham sandwich too. The GTI driver, who failed to give way to a grass verge in a stationary car, was found guilty of drink driving. He had to pay £419 in fines and costs and lost his license for 14 months, giving him plenty of time to clean the mark of Machin off <laughs> his car bonnet. <clears throat> Uh, classic. TLL, leave a like, comment, I'm gone. Sub up, man. Check out that link tree in the description.